any man with a microphone at this point, I don't care what you have to say. You're trash. Seriously, I didn't know who this man was. Who's this man? Andrew Huberman, Huberman? I don't even care. That's how much I don't care. I don't even care what, how you pronounce his name. Uh, but apparently he has millions of followers. Uh, a lot of them women. Women, stop following men. Seriously, at this point, uh, I just assume every man on the internet who makes money off of giving advice is an inch male. I had, I had literally had never heard of that man until yesterday when this hit piece came out. It's so funny. I have so much to say about this. And I'm going to go over this piece later on. First, I want to go into what exactly this man has been doing and how even if you're like me and never heard of this loser, I mean, just come on. I could have told you this man is a meathead. Dude in his 40s, uh, never been married, doesn't have children, who looks like this and has a podcast with millions, I could have told you. Trash! Even though I never even heard of that man, never heard his name, don't care. Never, I never listen to men's podcasts because they always end up being abusers. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, but guess what? Guess what I have heard? Some of that crap he says. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that nothing's ever said is valuable, but um, literally, uh, just recently, one of my doctors told me to look at the sun as soon as I wake up. It came from that forker. So, like, whether you know his name or not, I promise you, you know him. Now, let's talk about, before I go into what a, a trash human being he seems to be, I want to talk to you about his direct impact on women. Because this goes back to the thing I talk about all the time, about marathon runners. You know, several months after I was doing all those videos about marathon runners and how they ruin women's lives, and a lot of men are, so, are like the most selfish men in the world run marathons. Uh, the New York Times came out with this piece. Uh, maybe they were doing this on their own, um, or maybe they are inspired by my work. I'm not sure. But... One partner runs the marathon, the other does everything else. And this whole thing is about how men who run marathons end up making the entire household revolve around them and their stupid marathon, which isn't just running. If it was just running, fine, that's fine. But the whole household revolves around all the, all the lifestyle of running. So all this reminds me of this psycho. I did videos about him last year. Maybe I'll revisit him again. But uh, these men who are in their 40s, who are trying to crack the code and learn how to live forever, even though use of, most of them are terrible human beings who literally just terrorize and traumatize women, they just want to live forever. And they want to, like, why, wh of all the people to preserve these dudes, oh, this billionaire, I told you this man is abusive. He screwed over uh, his fiance. I can go back and revisit that. But every time, these men obsessed with their health are usually addicts, right? Or like control freak. They're doing something to try to avoid all of their trauma, all of their patriarchy indoctrination. And they're like, I'm just going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to, they're control freaks. And if they're controlling their body like this, I bet you most of those men are trying to control women too. So this is why I don't mess with health nuts. They're unhinged. Being healthy is great. Being like super not healthy is really bad, but being like obsessed with health, that's not, that, that's not good. And you know what else it does? It's direct, like it's, it's a rocket ship to the alt-right pipeline, especially for men. You know that the Almond Mom stuff always ends, sends up women into QAnon and the, and the alt-right. It's an even faster track for men. Seriously, imagine looking like this. And thinking, you are so special. You not only should have billions of dollars, which means you've unalived people. No billionaire is, <laughs> with the exception of maybe a few. If you are a billionaire, you're probably responsible for the death of people. You can't get that rich without exploiting people for their labor, starving them extracting resources from a country that was formerly colonized and continues to be, but just not officially. Like, I'm sorry, I don't like billionaires and tech bros and health nuts for this very reason. You're control freak. You're addicted. It's never enough. It's never enough. But why should we care about this Andrew? I'm gonna call him Andy. And Andy. Andy, your time is up. Andy boy. 
Um, not only does he talk about, you know, health and wellness and stuff like that, um, he also does building healthy relationships. Oh, who did he have on for that? Oh, is that Jay Poe? Sorry, Joe Poe? <laughs> oh my God. I was thinking of Jay Love. Joe Poe? Jordan Pearson? For people who are always like, why do you hate Jordan Pearson so much? Uh, besides all the things that he said that is so problematic and him literally being like the artsy, sensitive version of Andrew Tate. <laughs> uh, in this New York Times article, this is what he had to say about a mass on a live. He was angry at God because women were rejecting him. Remember that Toronto counter? The cure for that is enforced monogamy. That's why at my monogamy and and and. As according to him, preventing hordes of single men from violence, it is necessary for the stability of society. Enforced monogamy helps that. So, uh, Andy had this inchmel on his little podcast talking about building healthy relationships. And this is a man who thinks that the way that you control males unhinged violence is by forcing a woman to be in a home with that man. And by the way, the uh, forced monogamy is just for women. I promise you, the, 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 the men are gonna be forking whoever. It's just for the women. Make the women live with these men so they won't kill everybody. Uh, no thanks. We are not the sacrificial lam lambs. I don't wanna be in a house with this, these psychos. So Andy also did nasty your emotion. Relationships and high performers, social connect and bonding. So the reason why I care about this man being a terrible, terrible man to, to women is the fact that he has made himself an expert on not just sleeping and eating healthy and plugging all those uh, protein shakes and whatever else he's trying to sell. They're all trying to sell you something. But he also has made himself an expert on relationships. A man who has never been married or, you know, up until now, we just thought he just wasn't married. And I'm not saying that marriage is an indicator of a good man. By the way, most trash men are married and exploiting those women. But a man who's never been married and he's, what is he, in his 40s or I don't even 50s by now? No kids, but wants a bunch of them. Wants a lot of them. How much you want to bet he's not going to parent those kids? Uh, I'm sorry. He's got all these moms following him. He has a whole following of moms who take advice from a man who's never had children and has never been married. Stop taking advice from men. Do not take advice from men. I'm sorry. I feel unhinged right now. Um, but like men, men don't even understand our, they don't even understand, they don't even know where the clit is. Do you think they understand our lives? Do you think they understand what we deal with every day? Dealing with them? Stop listening to men. Please, for the love of God, stop listening to men because those men are rich. And then women like me and so many of my mutuals who pour our hearts in this stuff and have lived experiences, we can barely pay our bills. And then men like this, these grifters, are not only making a ton of money, but they're out there exploiting all these women in their personal lives and exploiting their fans with their like pseudoscience, blah, 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 buy my supplement, blah. God, it just, it's crazy to me. How do they keep getting so, I know how, but I can't believe this man is so, I never heard of him. And yet he entered my house recently with the suggestion of the look at the sun thing and whoa, what, how revolutionary, whoa, look, what a smart man. Like, I, I, as if that's new. I swear to God, every, every man is a gold digger. Every man is a gold digger until proven otherwise. And they're all grifters. They, um, he probably stole all his research from a woman, right? It's even on his Wikipedia page, okay? So you don't have to like listen to his crap to know that he's just like peddling dietary supplements. Let's get into just how much this man has been impacting women's lives, whether you listen to him or not. Meet the Hubberman husbands and their long-suffering wives. How much you want to bet the Hubberman husbands are also running marathons, right? Same energy. So it talks. It, the, the, one of the it interviewed all these women who are married to these Hubberman dude, dudes who worship him, and they're all of a sudden they're like they stand in direct sunlight for twenty minutes. They put their plunge their face into a bowl of ice as soon as they wake up, and then they ingest five-step supplement regimen <laughs> full of all this crap. Oh, these are not women who are, you know, uh, almond mom, goop or whatever. No, they have, that. she has a Hubberman husband because men make you do whatever they're doing. They're the 
king in a castle. So some of the crap that this Hubberman Andy has been doing is uh, suggested protocols. Sleeping with mouth tape, using exclusively red lights after sunset. And because of all this stuff he's peddling, he's got an enthusiastic following of tech bros. Oh, cool, tech bros. My favorite people. They're just, you know, just inchmels that are like nerds. And other educated young men obsessed with hijacking their way into a better life. Like that billionaire bio bro. But now it's spreading to their partners. Shocker. Everything that when, when men are insane, their, their, their partners suffer more. Every time. When they have no friends, their partners suffer. When they have addictions, their partners suffer. And when they're into this crap, their partners suffer. When they run a marathon, their partners suffer. The women who are attached to these men suffer so much more than the men themselves when they do this stuff. I swear to God. We pay the price of these men being crazy because of patriarchy and us being responsible for these dudes and being trapped in a house with them and blamed for everything that they do. This one woman they interviewed, her husband owns a combination, oh God, of a surf store and barber shop. I know exactly that kind of clientele. And by the way, this Andy dude, like from what I understand, I did a long deep dive yesterday, hours of reading into this man. Um, seems like he just blames his parents' divorce for all of his problems. Bruh! My parents are divorced. Like, are all of us supposed to be this insane? Like, it, I swear to God, so many men are like, my parents got divorced and it traumatized me. Okay. Like, were you also, like, uh, essayed as a child? Maybe you were. And you just haven't dealt with it. A lot of men have that and they don't deal with it. And then, and then they go on to torture women. Uh, were you graped multiple times? Or were you stalked multiple times? Have you dealt with men? Like, they're just like, my parents got the best. Is that it? Okay. And I bet he blames his mom for that. I'm not saying men don't suffer during their childhood, but I can't believe so many men blame their parents getting divorced for their unbelievably uh, unhinged, abusive behavior, like addictions and everything. Like, lots of us have been through way more than that and did not do this to people. And by this, I mean the article I'm gonna go into later on. This is just the effect of this man. So this couple, they bonded up, oh, see, again, I mean, I like that men take care of themselves because the other, the other side of this coin is the men who refuse to take care of themselves, who smoke and drink and eat like crap, don't exercise, won't go to the doctor, and then have all these things, and then they get sick, and guess who has to take care of them? Guess who has to take care of them? The women who are attached to them. And if they're not dating someone, their mom or their sister or their female friends. Whenever men do not take care of themselves, women have to step in. So this is why women, one reason why women are so attracted to men who are into their physical health. They're like, oh, at least I don't have to like take care of him. But guess what? A lot of these men who are obsessed with their health end up either A, going so crazy that they get injured and then we have to take care of them in their stupid injury because they're completely reckless in the wilderness, I've done videos on that, or um, they are so into this stuff, they become addicted to it and they're obsessed with it and they become control freaks and they, they might as well just be like drinking or doing something else because when they can't control their health, they're complete pricks. So they, this couple you know, bonded over paleo diet and taking care of themselves, right? Because women usually are better at taking care of ourselves because we have no choice. Uh, and, then, and then there was a noticeable shift. She said he started getting really serious about his sleep hygiene. I hate that phrase. Installing red lights and turning off all the overhead lights after sunset. All of a sudden, I was like, where are you getting this stuff? Uh, oh, it's from the hidden and lab time So, uh, there's, in this article, there's all these women who basically are complaining about their husbands who bought into this man's protocol their extensive health protocols and they're dragged through all this stuff because again because men think that they're the king of the castle the the, the, the the whole family has to do what they're doing and if they don't like with that marathon runner article that i went over the women not have to cook two meals one for their crazy diet their husband's eating and then one for themselves because they don't want to eat like a millions of carbs because they're not running 10 miles a day. So no matter what, when men get into something, hobbies, this crap, uh, they always end up abusing women's time. 
and financially abusing them. Because like I said yesterday, men, men who, uh, once you start to understand that your time is valuable, it has a dollar sign on it. Because when you're doing all this crap that he's making you do, right? That's your time. Men steal our time. Uh, that is financial abuse. We've been making fun of almond moms for a long time. Diet obsessed mothers. Yeah, I'm not like a fan of them either. But when men do this, the whole family pays. Because unlike men, women have a hard time saying no. So if the man's like, we're gonna do this, you're like, well, um, <laughs> and then we end up doing this crap. One of the women said that the women, the, uh, the wives of these uh, Uber, whatever, the Andy's little cult, uh, they need a support group. That's how hard it is dealing with these husbands. We're opening an ice plunge sauna recovery studio thanks to this man. <laughs> this other woman, my husband tricked me into drinking probiotics and, ven and vinegar last night. There's so many women were talking about their husband enforced wellness routines with red light saunas and overflowing supplemental cabinet. Think about how much money goes into that. Think of how much money. This, you remember just the way, the same way men will spend, they will waste so much money on their hobbies and their vices. This is another one. Heavy duty shower and tap water filters, uh, installing air filtration systems, all because of this dude. I swear to God, mediocre white men can convince so many people to do the weirdest thing. They talk about how he got so popular because he has a calm, measured professor's voice. Dutiful citation of scientific studies. It, this all kind of popped off during the pandemic too, where people were afraid for their health, didn't know what was happening, uh, stuck in their house. And his advice, especially in the beginning, was uh, relatively sane. Uncontroversial uh, fundamentals like get enough sleep, exercise regularly, avoid excessive caffeine and alcohol, like groundbreaking right but this is the important part this is how this man got so popular i swear to god every man on the internet seems to send men to the alt-right uh, huberman also seems to offer a missing link for men a way to talk about health and wellness that doesn't appear too outwardly feminine men who are too afraid of being outwardly feminine y'all need to unpack your misogyny deal with patriarchy god that men will do anything to be manly, oh, like, God, they're just such suckers. The other thing, or perhaps more critically, a means of casting self-care as science, not vanity, because they make fun of women who take care of themselves. But then you got this meathead, Andy, and now they're like, no, this is science-based, science-based. Look at the sun, look at the sun for 20 minutes. Come on. Uh, Hooverman allowed men to rebrand it as biohacking, I swear to God. Instead of men just being like, I should take care of myself. So I live longer, so I'm here if they have children for my kids, for my, my partner, so that they don't have to take care of me because I respect myself and not, no. Biohacking. Everything is about violence, I swear. Like violence and cheating and dominating and stealing. God forbid men just like learn how to take care of themselves and not feel like the need to say no homo or some crap. I swear to God, the stuff men will do to just like not feel gay. As if, as if that or being a woman is the worst thing you can be. Like we know at the end of the day that men are jealous of us, but they'll do anything to not be like us, but they really want to. So they'll be like biohacking. <laughs> biohacking or optimization, because it's all about how smart they are. And they cheat in the system. In the New York Times article, Jessica Grouse, I think is how you say her name, wrote about uh, her own H Hubberman hose husband. My hunch was that middle-aged men are just an, uh, a, an unsaturated market for diet information because they haven't been inundated with as much of it as women have been. But with Hubberman's podcast, men could be in on the fun or the pain, depending on how you look at it. Lest I remind you the stuff men are doing right now. They're so lost. They will pay uh, $18,000 to endure military grade inspired punishments at Alpha Camp. 
I love this tweet. Oh my God, just confront your dad already. What the fuck? And that's exactly what this is. So many of these men, it's literally like their daddy issues. They just won't deal with their dad or, or their mom. And then they get into all this crap and then they drag their wives through it too. Literally anything but the work. Uh, a shock to no one. Uh, the men who are adopting uh, Huberman, I'm, I don't know how you say his name and I really don't care. I don't want to listen to him. Uh, his protocols are rubbing off on their partners. Given the time, energy, and mon sometimes money. Sometimes, how could this not cost a lot of money? How is a sauna and red lights and all that crap not going to cost women? And supplements not costing a lot of the family's money. And again, men will spend the family's money on whatever stupid new thing they like. Uh, meanwhile, women won't even buy themselves one nice thing because they all usually invest first in the in the family and invest first in themselves and what's left over goes to the family i swear and this is like there's statistics on this okay so let's just say so andy has confessed to waking up at 5 a.m or 6 a.m every morning not eating until midday and spending two hours a week just cycling between his sauna and ice bath okay that's and then he also never drinks alcohol and goes to bed by 11 p.m. Not exactly a routine conducted to leisurely mornings or fun nights out with your partner. Again, these men, they're, whatever they're into takes up the whole life. The whole life of the family. That's why they have something called golf widows or whatever. Uh, like every woman who is dated or married to a climber, a marathoner, a golfer, a hunter, a gamer, whatever it is, whatever it is the men do for escapism because they'll literally do anything to escape. Um, this makes it very hard to live with these men because the whole family has to revolve around their stupid new hobby. And in this case, it's just healthy wellness. I'm sorry, biohacking. Look at this. One of the women says that, you know, she would describe herself as a uh, uh, Andy household. She and her husband and her 20 year old year old daughter listen to the podcast and share what they've learned from the, around the dinner table. Can you imagine the whole family worshiping this man who abuses women and before uh, allegedly, allegedly abuses women. Um, and anybody who's read that piece and thinks that I am exaggerating, uh, when you are lying and coercing women and uh, doing all this stuff, like that is a form of abuse. Just cause you're not like, doesn't mean you're not abusing. But look, there's a lot of women who are the, you know, Huberman, who whatever, Andy ha husbands in their relationship. Again, we got women. We got women giving this man money. Women listen, stop listening to men, especially men that hate women. The, 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 I don't care what science blah, 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 they say. The, God, just assume any man with a podcast hates a woman, hates, hates women until proven otherwise. There's a lot of people who are like, how is all this obsession with like sleep hygiene and all that stuff any different than counting calories? And that's the thing. This guy, Andy, is all about control and rigidity. So one of the tenets of white supremacy, this may sound like it's coming out of nowhere, but it's not. Um, Google that term if you don't know what I'm talking about. One of them is black and white thinking, right? And perfectionism. Anything that is like, you need to live your life like it's a spreadsheet. How is that healthy? How is that healthy? Yeah, it's good to have good habits and routines, but anybody trying to sell you on rigidity is probably going to send you to the alt-right pipeline because that line of thinking that it's you're good or you're bad this is red light or green light you know you got to like i'm sorry i don't want to live in the military and this is like military approach this is about control this is like leaves out any like humanity any any room for error again good habits great but obsession with these good habits ends up becoming a bad habit. I know I just used the good bad thing, but it's unhealthy because this one woman says that she shared her experience dating a boyfriend who was obsessed with his health and how that led her to become rigid in her own behavior and how, you know, you're trying to do something healthy, but you're so like rigid with it. Um, that rigidity starts to take over and it no longer is healthy anymore. Which is again, so many men treat anything that they do that might be good for them into a freaking addiction because they won't deal with their trauma. They won't deal with their stuff. They're just like, this thing, this is gonna fix me. That's gonna fix me. I'm gonna climb Everest instead of confront my dad. 
right? I swear they're all like, they're all like, they just, just, just please deal with your childhood. Whatever happened to you and unpack patriarchy and all the stuff that makes you hate yourself, but also feel entitled to the world because women suffer. Women always suffer when men are not doing okay. We suffer more than the men because we got to deal with our own crap and theirs because they will always unload their crap onto us and and hook us into their stuff. Ask any woman who's been married to an alcoholic or these men will literally ruin you, ruin you and unalive you outright or through your nervous system. So she goes, for example, maybe you're taking ice baths every day. That's great. But if you miss your ice bath, is your day ruined? If you miss your ice bath, do you feel like crap? Is it okay for you to miss your ice bath? And this is exactly what I was talking about with these marathon runners. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. I know several women who have been married to or dated marathon runners or whatever, climbers or whatever it is they're obsessed with. And when these men can't run, they're complete D-backs. They're awful to be around. The same way my ex uh, was awful to be around if he didn't. So then I started like helping fund his habit because it was his medicine. Any man who uses something external, some obsession, some form of escapism as medicine, this man's going to be a nightmare. What if he, what if they get injured? What if they, he can't run marathons anymore? You're going to have to live with that nightmare. A ask any woman who's dated a climber who got injured. You do not want to be in a house with a man who can't go climbing when climbing is his church. Mm -mm. They're worse than dry drunks. And as I said, these male wellness culture, uh, it's 2018 health and wellness spaces had led men down the darker and darker rabbit holes towards the alt right incel adjacent political beliefs. That's what I'm saying. Any, any man you're following on YouTube is most likely you're going to fall into the alt right pipeline because of the algorithm. And I swear, I've told you all this before, but my husband was literally trying to watch some videos on men's groups because he started a couple and he was, you know, even just watching like the man enough podcast, you know, where they talk about like feelings and stuff. Guess who they're always suggesting it? Jordan Peterson, like literally just every time he tries to watch anything, it, it keeps trying to send him into the, this pipeline. But it doesn't help when you literally have Jordan Peterson on your stupid podcast, Andy. So I like this woman's tweet. She says, it's a, uh, the, 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 the article, and I'm gonna cover that article in a whole different video because it deserves, it's, it's so long and so detailed, it deserves its own, own separate thing. So it's an, it, so this is about an epidemic that's emerged from the past 10 years that I've not seen as much written about. A rising tide of men who figure out how to speak the language of emotional intelligence. Sorry, this, I can't, I'm waving stuff. <laughs> uh, Anthony just found this and gave it to y'all. I have too many instruments now. The language of emotional intelligence and what the writer refers to as profound interest in the internality of women. But instead of using it to nurture and to be in the service of life and relationships, they're using it to self-aggrandize, control, and manipulate the world for their own needs. Power, friends, and money. And even if you are somebody, like she says, who's benefited from his work, I just because he sucks doesn't mean that none of his work is valid. It does impact the way I see them the same way Picasso. I did a video on Picasso recently where I'm like, you know what, fork this guy. I don't ever want a picture of a in my house because I know that it was probably drawn from a little girl that was held hostage in his house. But look, dudes like this, why is it mad at? People don't follow him because he's a good partner or nice or a normal person. People follow him because he is driven. It's not obsessed about his topic to produce endless content. Blah, 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 blah. All these men are like, it's a hit piece. It's a hit piece. No, he's exposing this. This dude is just like most of them. It's trash. Because this dude is a pathological liar and willing to expose multiple women to transgender. Trans trans okay, that's in the article. And then she's like, but oh, uh, you know, but he taught me to look at the sun in the morning. So he's a God. Exactly. It matters because he needs credibility to do what he does. And like this guy said, who would have thought uh, this Andy dude, a person obsessed with control is controlling, lying, and manipulative. People who pretend to have mastered themselves as a result of their own will are lying. I'd agree with that. On that note, you should never worship anyone on the internet. Please don't worship me. I'm an imperfect human being. Don't put me on a pedestal. I'm going to be wrong sometimes. I haven't mastered shit. I'm, I'm still a messy, messy person. 
But most of all, I'm a storyteller. But the problem is that men, men who especially who really haven't worked on themselves or even if they have, as soon as they get a little bit of power and influence, if they haven't unpacked patriarchy, what are they gonna do first? Exploit women in their personal lives and the women online. The more you know.